Guys, I was not ready for this. OpenAI just announced a completely new model called GPT-01, and it's very, very impressive. I'm gonna break down everything we know so far, so make sure you stick around until the end of the video. So what's the big deal with GPT-01? Well, imagine GPT-4, but with complete reasoning and logic. If that doesn't sound impressive, GPT-01 is leaving GPT-4 in the dust with some truly insane accuracy improvements. How insane? Let's just say that in some categories, we're seeing jumps from 13% to 83% accuracy. That's a 70% increase, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. But before we dive deeper into the nitty-gritty details, let's talk about what makes GPT-01 so special and how OpenAI has managed to come up something this incredible. Trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. All right, so this new model comes in two versions. There's GPT-01 Preview, which is the base model, and GPT-01 Mini as a more affordable option. Both have a massive 256,000 token context window, with GPT-01 Preview being about five times more expensive than GPT-4. GPT-01 Mini costs slightly less than the Preview version, now, when it comes to speed, based on the testing I've done, GPT-01 preview is pretty slow. It takes around 40 to 50 seconds to generate a response, but the performance boost is absolutely insane and more than makes up for the speed. According to OpenAI's reports, it's outperforming top researchers in fields like quantum physics, genetic engineering, and advanced mathematics. It's particularly impressive at complex reasoning and problem-solving tasks, with performance jumps that are mind-blowing. How mind-blowing? Well, GPT-4, which was the previous best, could only solve about 18% of problems from the Putnam Mathematical Competition, but GPT-01 nailed a whopping 92%. That's a crazy 74% increase. This is for the full GPT-01 model, which is different from GPT-01 Preview that scored around 78%, but even that's a 60% accuracy boost, which is still absolutely insane, guys. Now, before we get too carried away, let me just clarify something. While GPT-01 is crushing it in the reasoning department, it's not quite the all-in-one LLM we might have hoped for. I've been playing around with this model and staring at these benchmarks for a while now, and this model seems to be laser-focused on reasoning and solving hard, logical tasks. That's it. Don't get me wrong, that's still insanely impressive. But if you look at other benchmarks, especially MML's English literature category, the improvements are, well, let's just say they're not writing the next great American novel anytime soon. So, sorry folks, AGI isn't here yet, and we're still pretty far off if we're being honest. But let's not let that detract from the fact that OpenAI has managed to create a model that's this good at reasoning tasks, which is still a huge deal. So, how did OpenAI manage to pull this off exactly? Well, they're keeping their cards close to the chest, but they did give us a rough outline. The secret sauce this time around is something called chain of thought, combined with reinforcement learning. For those of you scratching your heads, let me break it down. Chain of thought is basically like having the model think about what it's generated. It's planning, reflecting, and improving its results over and over again before it spits out an answer. It's kind of like giving the AI a chance to double check its work before finalizing its answer. Now, here's where it gets really impressive. They've used reinforcement learning to teach the model how to think properly with this chain of thought. And all of this is baked right into the training. That means GPT-01 is super consistent at thinking and doesn't go off the rails as easily as GPT-4 or some of the other AI models. Now, OpenAI hasn't really released many details about this chain of thought, nor do we know exactly what the model is doing behind the scenes. Every time you throw a prompt at GPT-01, it's doing some crazy thinking behind the scenes. We only get to see a summary and how long it took. OpenAI's playing hard to get with their secret sauce, I guess. But rumor has it that every query is generating maybe 100k tokens at once for its private chain of thought. That's insane. But hey, take it with a grain of salt, as this is still a rumor. Knowing this, it might make sense why it's only available for paid users. And you only get 30 messages per week. And yes, you heard that right. Per week, not per day. That's absolutely mind-blowing, guys. But there's still some good news. No waitlist. You can use it right away. Well, if you can get access, it seems the capacity is extremely limited, and only a few select users are allowed in. 
I've been fortunate enough to gain access and while I'm still testing it out, I'll share a detailed review in a future video. For now, I can say that it's not particularly impressive when it comes to creative writing. The dialogue feels repetitive, and the tone clearly reveals it's an OpenAI GPT model, a problem that's been around since GPT-3. I'm surprised OpenAI hasn't addressed this yet. On the other hand, Claude generates much more human-like text. If you're a creative writer, you'd be better off using Claude. It's cheaper, faster, and performs better than GPT-01. Now, here's something crazy I read about GPT-01. Researchers found that the longer these models think, the better they perform on reasoning tasks. This opens up a whole new way of scaling AI models. Before, all the compute was focused on training, but now GPT-01 is showing that investing compute in inference might actually be worth it. I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes the new meta for LLMs, inference timescaling. One of the OpenAI researchers even said they're aiming for future versions to think for hours, days, or even weeks. Can you imagine? But a lot of people have asked, isn't this just fine-tuning on chain of thought data? Isn't there already research on this? Well, yes and no. There's certainly more yapping than before, but OpenAI's refined their data skills and training techniques. They've achieved scores beyond any other models. Maybe other models' chain of thought wasn't baked in as hard, or maybe no one else could make a huge, high-quality synthetic data set without the model collapsing. But hey, don't get too hyped yet. There's still a chance OpenAI's just evaluation maxing. We should probably take these benchmarks with a grain of salt. Plus, we only got the preview model, not the full GPT-01. So OpenAI's dropped a ton of demos for us to check out. I'll link them all down in the description so you can take your time looking through them. But like I've said, we've only got the GPT-01 preview model to play with not the full GPT-01 that's blowing up the benchmarks. Now, I'm gonna do an even deeper dive into GPT-01's performance in a few weeks. So, more accurate info about the architecture, how they've actually done it, plus what other people have noticed. And of course, I'll also share my own experience. So stay tuned for that, folks. So what's the big takeaway from all of this? Well, it's clear that OpenAI is cooking up something pretty insane this time. But is this actually the new meta for AI? Are we going to see more models spending hours, days, or even weeks thinking before giving an answer? It's too early to say for sure, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. And that's all for this video, folks. If you've stuck around this long, I really appreciate that. If you liked the video, why not like and subscribe? It's sure to help the channel and motivate me to continue doing what I do. If on the other hand, you didn't like the video, please let me know in the comments below so that I can improve on my mistakes. As always, you've all been fantastic. Stay tuned for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.